my oldest son just turned 19 years old. <laughs> Congratulations, big son. I used to call him my CFO Bifo because even as just a little baby, he was so explosive. He thought he was Spider-Man and so he'd be doing flips and shooting spider webs and all types. He's always been an active kid. And if you're a parent, to watch your child go from being a little baby and sucking on a booby to crawling, to walking, to talking, to the, the whole aspects of growing up, there's nothing more exciting. There's, there's nothing more impactful, hell. I'm honored to be a dad, right? But being a dad, being a parent, it comes with lots of responsibilities. You don't have the option to just be like, hey, hey, young person, do what you're gonna do. And whether you fail or succeed, it's all up to you. Hell no. That's where parenting comes in. And as a dad, you know, for the journey of a man, for the journey of a young man, you be out here and everyone says, be a man, be a man, be a man. And as people tell you this, the question you ask is like, hey, what does that mean? Tell me, somebody please help me and tell me what it means to be a man. Is, is there like a, a, a book, a manual on how to be a man? The grass is very high out here. Last time I was walking, I encountered a, a rat snake. I was told there was a rat snake. And now I just walk, walking through huge spider webs. You never know what you encounter on your journey, right? And so for my son, as, as being a young man, he has no idea what he's going to encounter on this journey as a young man. We, we all have thoughts. When I was 18, I thought I'd do something. I went to the United States military and I found out that I didn't know nothing. I learned so many things just in that time span. I actually had my first born in a military base. Oh man, I forgot what the base was called. Maybe you guys just don't want to share that information. But he was born in an Air Force base and the hospital was great. The whole experience was so fantastic. And so now, if I was to talk to my son 19 years later, I'd be like, hey, <laughs> join the military, learn as much as you possibly can, pick the most bestest job that translates over into the world. And when you come out, the world is yours. There's, there's so, there's, so, when I asked, what manual do you have on how to become a man? You can easily say the Bible. Lots of folks can say the Bible. But when they say the Bible, they don't look at themselves as a character, a main figure in the Bible. They look at the characters in the Bible as if they're some type of magical beings from the past and we have no ability to be equally as great or greater. And if you don't think you're, if you don't see yourself as valuable as the characters in the Bible, then damn, man, that's, <laughs> there's a lack of self-esteem. There's a lack of confidence. Right now, there's a lack of breath because trudging through this thick, wet grass, it can be kind of challenging. Hell, it was challenging just to get up and come out here this morning. It always is. It's always hard to do the hard things. And so if, if, I, if, if I was talking to another man, I said, being a man means to do the hard things. If someone told you that, and just empty with no with no supporting concepts you would go outside you would try to lift every rock you would try to do every impossible task because you said being a man is doing hard things and so if i told you that be a, a good man reads the bible then you could easily just read the bible every day have your face stuck in the bible and never be able to translate what you learned how you learned it or be even be able to apply it you see, I'm a creator. Ever since I was young, I've always written, I've always built things, I've always wanted to create something new. There's no better feeling than creating something from scratch and watching that thing become manifest or have someone say, you did a good job. I've written two books, sold thousands of copies, and I don't think there's a more fulfilling thing than to know that someone read one of my books. Hell, right now, I don't think there's anything more fulfilling than you watching my videos. I appreciate you. I thank you. I thank you for coming out here on this journey with me. And so as I build, I think <laughs> most men want to be builders. Most men want to be builders, but they don't have the work ethic or the drive or the sheer belief in self to actually build the thing that they believe. And so I'm building a media company right now. It's, it's challenging, it's kind of expensive. The camera that I'm using right now, the DJI Osmo Pocket 3, 
to get the creator bundle is $700. Why in the world would I spend $700 on a camera that sole purpose is to talk to you? Because I value you. I value content creation. I think that I'm supposed to invest in myself and I invest in myself. Then I create the company. I create the product that I want to deliver and I create the company that I want to own that I want others to be a part of. This investment, no one said if you spend this 700, this is already on top of the multiple thousands that I have for the in-house studio. No one says that you're gonna get a return on your investment. And so when you're investing in yourself, Hell, you better believe in yourself and you better have the work ethic to make all your dreams come true. So back to being a builder. I think about Noah and when he was building the ark, man, Noah was surrounded by strong men. Noah had family. And as Noah was building everyone else, they had ideas. I don't want to build an ark. I want to build a car. They didn't have cars when Noah built the ark. But hey, they had other plans instead of building this giant monstrosity that's supposed to save the world and how do you think noah felt as he believes this thing with all of his heart and he's watching his loved ones and they're saying they laughing at him he says please please help me please help me don't nobody come and help noah but noah has to help himself and noah has to use what god gave him to help himself and now noah everyone knows the story noah builds the ark everyone dies and god starts over with noah yeah now can you imagine I'm asking my family, the people that I love, every man in my life, why y'all staring at me while I'm working and have all these other plans? When you really ain't got a plan, you see me doing the thing and I'm asking you, why won't you come and help me do the thing? That man, this grass is high, the journey is tough and guess what? <laughs> it's just me. Yeah, 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 I can't neglect it. I do get some help and people do come through, right? <laughs> But the majority of the weight is squarely on my shoulders. I understand it. I embrace it. And so for my son that's just celebrating his 19th birthday, if he asks his dad, what does it mean to be a man? The best thing that I could tell him is, you better have an idea, son. And whatever the idea is, you better work as hard as you possibly can to make that idea come true. Lots of people are going to doubt you. Lots of people are going to say, terrible things and be critical hell some people might actually try to tear down what you're building and you just can't let them she she might be beautiful man your friends might they might be the coolest friends in school if they ain't trying to help you get to where you're trying to go but if these friends ain't trying to help you build the ark that's not only going to save your life but the world around you I mean, you better run away from these people. Get away from them as fast as you can. Hey, the prettier that she is and the less that she believes in you, move your feet even that much faster. Don't even pull out your wine tang and put it in her hoo-hoo hole. Because once you do that, man, nobody knows. She has control. She has an element of control of your life because now you didn't enter into this relationship with a person with no intention. When I was talking to my friend Raheem, Raheem asked me, he has this beautiful question. And the question is, who motivates the motivator? Who encourages the man in the world where men are trying to appease women? Who motivates the man that is working for the man? When I say the man, I don't mean the white man. I mean you, the greatest American lie, because you're a man working as hard as you can to sustain yourself and take care of your family. And you can't even make ends meet. <laughs> but you say, but you pretend like everything is okay. And you put your boots on, you put your hard hat on, and you go to work every day. Some of, some of y'all pretend to go to work because you ain't got nowhere to go. The shame of not having nothing is one of the greatest burdens that any man can have. That's why about 30,000 men every year, they say goodbye to the world. They say goodbye to the families because they, don't have, they, they can't see the value in themselves. They don't know what they believe. And so... When I'm talking to my grown son, who's not a little son no more, you come across things, right? <laughs> right now, I just came across some waters. Now, I got to make a decision. What am I going to do about this waters? Am I going to cross this waters? It's pretty slippery. It's a treacherous journey. I thank you, guys. Maybe you can save me as I cross this treacherous te terrain, huh? <laughs> just to get to the other side. And when I get to the side, what's on the other side, right? Do I walk all the way around? There's less water up there. 
this water right here is the water gonna take me away don't take me away water <laughs> that's the power of water water can wash you away or it can cleanse you and save you and today i cross the water and everything is fine right and so on this journey of manhood masculinity self-development oh and motivation that was pretty steep i had to get on up when we're talking to each other as we're encouraging each other and tackling obstacles sometimes as a younger man when i was a younger man just an e1 in the united states military i had to follow instructions i had to learn how to be a leader because i ain't know nothing how can i teach anybody anything when i don't know anything that's number one for you right now you have all the ideas in the world what are you an expert in and if you ain't an expert in nothing man if you ain't even an expert in yourself how can you talk to anyone about anything and who's listening <laughs> nobody wants to listen to nobody that don't know nothing huh and so when i'm talking to myself and i'm talking to my son and i'm talking to you the conversation is always really about me because i'm not the person that i believe myself that i'm supposed to be and i just look crazy i'm just a man with a camera talking to some people who look into me like hey why are you doing this because i believe in something great I believe that media is the most powerful tool that has ever existed in the history of the world, i.e. the Bible. <laughs> it's media, and that media, that message has been consumed by more people than any other book in the history of the world. And now we have equipment, all these spiders are out here, and I'm trying to duck spiders, avoid snakes, and have a conversation with you about accomplishing your goals, being a man of faith, being a man of action. This is intention. If you start off saying, man, I want you to be a man of faith, man of action, man of attention, motherfucker, look at you like, man, I got shit to do. <laughs> I got a million other things to do. And so that's the biggest, that's the biggest different, that's what separates men from men who don't want to accomplish anything. Because if you got a penis and some testicles, boy, you're a man. You're a man. So a thing that separates men from other men is the single-minded determination that no matter what, I'm going to do what I believe. And along the way, you start to believe a lot of things. I believe in my parents. I believe in my children. I believe in relationships. I believe in the men that I've built bonds with. I believe in the people that have shown me they have the capacity to believe in themselves. Because if you're dealing with people who don't have the ability to believe in themselves, they will get very heavy just trudging through this high grass is a journey. I'm 240 pounds. Could you imagine if I had another 100 pound person on my back? That's a little person. Could you imagine if I had a 200 pound person on my back? Can you carry a 200 pound person? Better yet, can you carry yourself? And so, as we're building, as we're creating, number one, we're building a relationship. I want you to be dynamic and powerful. I want you to continue to come meet me. Every time you see my face on that thumbnail, guess what that means? Not only did we have a goal, not only did we have a journey to go on, but we accomplished the journey. And so once you see that thumbnail, you know that I did it. So since I did it, I'm 240 pounds, I'm fat, and I've already walked four miles. Most people, when they're fat, you don't see them fat. They work really hard, and they show up skinny, and then you see them skinny, and then you think that you can't do it too. Well, I'm showing sure up fat so that you can see me fat. I won't be fat for long and then you can say damn i watched him not be fat and when he was not when he was losing the weight i wasn't doing shit i was watching him eating chips hell no hell no you finna go be strong you finna go be great i'm talking to you i'm talking to myself i'm talking to my son who just became a young man you're gonna go and be great because the greatest american life you're my son